Rinkwide Vancouver. Pre-game, post-game, every game presented by Bodog from Sports Odds to free casino games. Make a play at Bodog.net. Watton and Jay Pat here with you with another edition of the pre-game show as the Canucks head into Winnipeg. Jay Pat feeling good about themselves. However, this is a start of a daunting 12 games for Vancouver. Yeah, it's a mini two-game road trip that'll take them into Calgary for New Year's Eve, but the bigger picture here is a 12-game stretch that's going to include a return trip to Winnipeg on January the 8th. The next time they're in the peg, that's the start of a five-game road trip that's going to take them to Pittsburgh and Tampa, Florida, and Carolina. They see the defending Stanley Cup champs a couple of times over this 12-game stretch. Edmonton's in there, the Islanders. Uh, I think we're going to learn a fair bit about the Vancouver Canucks, who roll into this stretch uh, on a three-game win streak. They're playing better. They're feeling better about themselves. But if they are going to stay with the playoff pack, if they're going to make up ground on the playoff pack, then this next dozen games for the Vancouver Canucks, I think, is going to be pivotal in terms of which direction this season is ultimately going to go. Let's get to the lineup change presented by Delaney's OK Tire out in Fraser Highway in Langley. Look at that. Going to get some help on the blue line tonight, it looks like, for the Canucks. Yeah, this is a lineup change because it looks like the season debut at long last for Travis Dermott, who left practice out at UBC on September 27th. And here we are on the 29th of December, so three months have passed. This will be his season debut. Of course, he played for the Canucks last year after the trade from Toronto, but it's been a long grind to get back from the head injury and they're all always so unpredictable and you got to make certain that uh, you've got the clean bill of health. He went down, he played a game in Abbotsford, got through that, has had a few practices, he'll be activated and it looks like he's going to skate with Luke Shen and that'll allow Quinn Hughes and Ethan Bear to continue to do some of the good things that they've been able to do here of late. It'll also mean that the former Jet Tyler Myers is paired with Oliver Ekman Larson, that veteran duo that had a decent start to the season last year. Obviously, it's been a struggle individually for those two when they've been paired together as well. But that looks like the top six that the Canucks are going to go with. So no Riley Stillman, no Kyle Burrows, but uh, has to be a welcome relief for Travis Dermott after this long stretch on the shelf to get back into National Hockey League game action. And I'm sure the Canucks are eager to see what he looks like uh, now that they're starting to, or he's going to start playing for keeps. Yeah, the Canucks are going to want to flush the last game that they had against the Jets. However, as you mentioned, they're going to see a lot of Winnipeg over the next 10 days. Yeah, well, they didn't like what they saw when they faced the Jets on December 17th. Remember, that was that final Saturday before Christmas, home game. Jets got up 5 nothing before Bo Horvat scored because, of course, Bo Horvat scored. But that was the night that Patrick Alvine, the general manager, went on after hours on Hockey Night in Canada and I think left people with more questions than answers after his uh, appearance there. So uh, a forgettable night all around. That was a Jets team that came to town and basically did what it wanted to do against the Vancouver Canucks. They played a sound structure, and we've heard that word used uh, with the Canucks and the search for structure. They found it a little bit here the last couple of games, but the Jets play a system. They stick to it. Rick Bonus has done a nice job there as head coach. And it was a challenge then, and it's going to be a challenge again here tonight, and it will be as well on January the 8th. Canucks have a couple of streaks going right now, in particular a red-hot one on the road. Yeah, and we've said this before, that it's been broken up because there have been a number of short trips or one-offs. They went into Calgary, they won. They went into Edmonton the game before Christmas. They were able to win that one. But it is seven in a row now, away from Rogers Arena. We know that the home ice record has been a bit of an issue, although they have won their last two uh, at the Raj. But out on the road, they seem to be relaxed. Some of the games have required overtime or a shootout. But at the end of the night, it's a bottom line business. And the Canucks continue to pick up the maximum points available to them. Again, as we said right off the top, this is going to be a challenging stretch. Seven of these next 12 are away from home, including that long southern road trip that's coming up in early January. But uh, you can't worry about that one right now. The focus has to be on getting into Winnipeg and starting this stretch of games with a victory. So this team has been relaxed. It's played well on the road, and we'll see if they can carry that on. Uh, and trying to make it four straight victories overall for the first time this season when you go back to the win over Seattle, the win in Edmonton, and the win the other night against the San Jose Sharks. The captain's line was red hot the other night, and we know all about Elias Patterson, what he's been doing lately. Interesting to see what Rick Bonus is going to do in terms of matchups. Yeah, Bo Horvat coming off back-to-back -back four point nights, two goals uh, against the Oilers, two goals coming out of Christmas against San Jose the other night. Elias Pettersson had the five point night against Seattle. He's got eight points in the three games since he's returned to the lineup after missing a couple of games with the flu. And so he's going, Horvat's going, the Jets have last change. Now, uh, the injury bug has taken a real bite out of this Winnipeg team 
uh, Blake Wheeler, Nikolai Ehlers, Mason Appleton. That's effectively a forward line that uh, the Jets are without. They've got some issues on the back end as well. But you've got Mark Scheifele, Mark Scheifele at center. You've also got Adam Lowry, who's a big, strong, physical guy down the middle as well. I wonder if they try to throw Lowry at a guy like Elias Pettersson and hope that uh, he can make life miserable for Pettersson. Uh, or maybe you go with Lowry against Horvat and try and shut him down. Whatever the case, the Canucks got to feel that they've got some depth and some balance right now because we haven't even mentioned JT Miller uh, and his line. But if the Jets focus on either Horvat or Pedersen, maybe it frees up a guy like JT Miller, who had a couple of goals in that Edmonton win. Maybe it'll allow him and his line mates to rise to the challenge. So uh, the Canucks are going with three deep down the middle. They think that gives them the best chance to win right now, and it will be interesting to see how the Jets counter and what strategy Rick Bonus uses uh, with last change to try to dictate the matchups tonight. Winnipeg's a bit of a wounded animal right now. They've dropped three straight, four of their last five. Yeah, this is the first time all season that they have lost three in a row. They're coming off a 4-1 loss at home to Minnesota the other night. We talked about the fact that, uh, you know, they are down some key players. There's no two ways about that. And they've done a nice job of holding their own. But you do wonder uh, if at some point some of these mounting injuries are starting to catch up to them. They've been a pretty good team on home ice, 12-6 and six, uh, in the 18 games that they have played in front of their home fans. So they're going to try to take advantage of home ice. It wasn't a help the other night against Minnesota, but... The Jets, I'm sure, feel like they're due to break out of things here. The Vancouver Canucks want to continue to add to their misery. So certainly one of the storylines there, the Canucks on a three-game win streak, the Jets having dropped three in a row for the first time all season. The Jets got a lot of firepower, but the offense has gone quiet lately, and they're led by a blue liner, Josh Morrissey, the leading scorer on the team. Now, did you say Josh Morrissey or Josh Norrissey, as they're calling him in Winnipeg, and he has worked his way into the Norris Trophy conversation. Interesting that's the second straight game the Canucks have faced an opponent who is led by a defenseman in scoring. The other night it was Eric Carlson, and he had a couple of helpers on the two San Jose goals. And Josh Morrissey with six goals and 40 points. So he's already to the 40-point mark before we flip the calendar to the new year. An incredible season for him, and I do think that he's starting to get some recognition league-wide. But in the absence of some of those others that they've leaned on in years gone by, uh, this has been a welcome injection of offense from the back end from Morrissey. Now, you talked about the fact that uh, their offense has gotten a little bit dry here of late. Just one goal in each of their last two games, and the power play over in its last four. So keep it, that in mind if special teams uh, come into play in this hockey game that uh, the Jets have firepower. We know those names. Shifley and Kyle Connor, Pierre Luc Dubois having a nice season. We mentioned Josh Morrissey. They've got guys that can score, uh, but for whatever reason here, and every team goes through ebbs and flows through the season. Uh, but right now, their offense running a little bit dry. The Canucks will be just fine if that continues for at least one more night here. Yeah, they do have guys that can score. They also have a goalie that can keep the puck out of the net. Connor Hellebuck doing Hellebuckian things again this year. Yeah, running with a 238 goals against average and a 920 save and seven save percentage. That's on the season. Now, Canuck fans, you may want to cover your ears here because we rolled these numbers out when Winnipeg came through Vancouver just ahead of Christmas. But Connor Hellebuck in his career has been lights out good against the Vancouver Canucks. And he was on the 17th. Horvat with a deflection goal on a power play. The only Canuck to beat him on that night. But Connor Hellebuck, lifetime against the Canucks. 12-4 and four is his win-loss record. A 1.69 goals against average. A 9.42 save percentage. Oh yeah, there's four goose eggs in there as well. So uh, this guy is a difference maker, even if his team isn't scoring goals, he can beat you single-handedly. The Canucks have firepower and they've got to make sure that they find a way to get a few past Connor Hellebuck tonight. And it's a milestone night for a former Canuck as well. Yeah, one of the good guys in the National Hockey League, a survivor, a guy who came in as a sixth overall draft choice. And it was all about offense then, but uh, like many, who have lasted as long as he has, Sam Gagne has adapted. He has changed. He's been a guy who has embraced a fourth line role at even strength, but then gets chances on the power play because he still has that offensive gift. And so, yeah, uh, congratulations to Sam Gagne, a thousand games in the National Hockey League. Interesting looking at the breakdown. How about this for just a curious factoid, if you will? Hmm. Uh, of the 999 games that he has played so far in his career, he's played 81 for the Vancouver Canucks. 81 for the Arizona Coyotes, and 81 for the Columbus Blue Jackets. The bulk of his games, though, 542 of them coming for the Edmonton Oilers, the team that drafted him back in 2006. Sam Gagne is my focus of my Bodog best bet tonight. I'm taking a bit of a chance here, j Pat, but I do love the value here. Sam Gagne, anytime goal scorer at plus 
300. Now he's got six goals on the year. His only multi-point game of the year came against the Canucks. And uh, I feel like in his 1,000th, he's going to step up, get a goal tonight, win me some money. Well, the goal that he scored against the Canucks earlier this month was a beauty, too. Yep. Off the rush, and he roofed it on Spencer Martin, who's going to be back in goal for the Canucks and looked good against San Jose the other night. So uh, Spencer Martin will do all he can to prevent Sam Gagne from scoring. But again, uh, the Winnipeg Jets and the way that they use Gagne, he's been up on the top line. He's been lower in the lineup, but he does see power play opportunities as well. Uh, will he be a man for the occasion? An anytime goal means that we're going to have to wait right down to the final buzzer to see if Sam Gagne comes through. And you know, in French, Gagne uh, means to win. So, uh, hey, if he scores, absolutely, you'll be a winner. I totally knew that. All right, Jay Pat, I'm expecting Sam Gagne to do something. Who do you want to do something in this game tonight? Well, the Canucks have these top guns that are going. We talked about Horvath and the incredible stretch that he's had here in the last couple of games. And Elias Pettersson dialed in as well. Uh, there are others. Yuli Mikheyev is feeling it right now. I'm going to go as his countryman, though. Andre Kuzmenko, a little bit quiet. And I say a little bit. He made a nice feed to Mikheyev uh, for the 3-1 goal against the Sharks the other night. And Kuzmenko did score against the Seattle Kraken in that uh, final game at home before Christmas, so it hasn't been that long since he's lit the lamp, but again, kind of quietly because so many others around him are scoring just one goal in his last seven outings for Andre Kuzmenko. So maybe he's due uh, getting a chance to play on that line with Pedersen and Peterson. And anytime you're playing with Elias Pettersson, uh, I think you're dangerous. And we've seen that that combination and that chemistry has come through repeatedly for the Vancouver Canucks. And then, oh, yeah, the power play. Now, right now, Kuzmenko has been moved to the second power play unit because Brock Besser, uh, whether they're trying to boost his trade value or they just see the utility of a guy like Besser at the net front, he's been on power play one. And so maybe that's part of the reason Kuzmenko hasn't been scoring as often as we had seen him earlier in the season. Whatever the case, start of a road trip, start of a tough stretch. If the Canucks are going to be a team that's pushing for a playoff spot, they got to prove that they can get the job done at home and on the road, and they're going to need their top-end guys to come through, and Kuzmenko is one of those. So, Andre Kuzmenko, I'm looking at you to do something to help the Vancouver Canucks extend the road win streak to eight tonight against the Jets. Road win streak to eight and looking to make it four straight for Vancouver. Let's see if they can do it tonight. In, Win in Winnipeg. This has been another edition of the Rink Wide Vancouver podcast presented by Bodog for Jeff Patterson. I'm Andrew Wadden. Remember, Rink Wide is the show that always scores.